Today I thought it could be fun to create a very brief introduction to firewalling with NF tables and use it to create a very simple firewall for a workstation type setup. So first of all, we need to talk about tables. Tables are the foundation for the firewall config, which will contain our chains and our chains will contain our rules. Each table will have an address family such as IP, IP6, and INET. There are a few more, such as ARP, Bridge, and NetDev, but they're outside of the scope of this video. A table with the IP address family will process only IPv4 traffic. A table with the IP6 address family will process only IPv6 traffic. And a table with the INET address family will process both of these. So let's say we have a table with the INET address family, so it applies to IPv4 and IPv6 traffic that contains three chains. Each chain will handle its own type of traffic, such as input, output, and forward. So our system's incoming traffic, outgoing traffic, and forwarded traffic. Each of these chains will contain a set of rules that define how we want their type of traffic to be handled. I have a fresh Debian install with XFCE here in a virtual machine, and on Debian the NFTables package is installed by default, so I'm going to go ahead and open slash etsy slash nftables.conf in a text editor. Here we can see our NFTables table which contains our chains, and our chains contain our rules. Inside of our chains, we can see the Debian variant of NFTables has already configured a little bit for us, so inside of our input chain, there is the type of the chain which is set to filter, and we are hooking input, of course, and the priority of our chain. Priority can be used to order our chains, and the lower values take priority over higher values, so for example, if we have a chain set to priority 0, it will be first in line compared to a chain with a priority of 10. By default, there isn't really anything here, so why don't we go ahead and set a default action for all of our chains. For input and forward, I'm going to set it to drop packets unless otherwise specified. And for output, I'm going to set it to accept to allow traffic out of the machine. All of what I'm going to cover in this video will be in the input chain, and to start I'm going to set ct state invalid drop to drop invalid packets. Next, it isn't a bad idea to accept packets from connections made by this machine, so to do that I'm going to add ct state in curly braces established related, accept. I'm also going to accept packets from loopback, so to do that I'll add if lo accept. For if loopback accept, we should drop traffic to loopback that doesn't actually originate from this machine, so to do that we can add if not equals lo ip daddr for destination address 127.0.0.1 slash 8 drop. Since this is set to ip, this will only cover ipv4, so we need to do the same for ip6. At this point, we're ready to try this out, so I'm going to save and exit this file. And then to start nftables on Debian, I'm going to run sudo systemctl start nftables. Now we can run sudo nft list rule set to make sure that our rules actually got applied. And to test out the firewall, I'm going to attempt to SSH into this virtual machine. And we can see that the connection does not go through. So what if we want to open port 22 so we can SSH into this machine? Well, I'm going to go back into the nftables config, and I'm going to add tcp dport 22 accept. To accept traffic on port 22, then save and exit the file. And to restart the firewall on Debian, I'm going to run sudo systemctl restart nftables. And if I attempt to SSH into this machine again, we can see that it connects just fine. So what if we only want to allow connections to port 22 from a specific IP address? Back in the config file, I'm going to add IP SADDR for IP source address and then the IP address I want to allow to the port 22 accept line. Save and exit. I'm going to restart nftables again. And if I attempt to make a connection, we can see that the connection goes through. And if I change this IP address and restart nftables, the connection will not go through because my IP address no longer matches the one that we defined in the config.